So what neurodegenerative disorder do you think about when a patient presents with upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron signs? Well, I hope you're thinking about ALS. Lower motor neuron involvement is muscle weakness or atrophy and fasciculations, and upper motor neuron signs are spasticity or hyperreflexia, but the people at step two pretty much know you understand this. So they may throw at you bulbar symptoms like dysarthria or dysphagia. Dysarthria is just difficulty speaking, while dysphagia is difficulty eating. To diagnose ALS, you first clinically evaluate the patient, upper motor neuron signs and lower motor neuron signs should make you think about ALS right off the bat when it comes to a question, but you can also use EMG, which is diagnostic, and don't forget to order an MRI of the brain and spinal cord just to exclude other possible causes. The treatment for ALS is Rylusol. You lose upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron function, so that's how I remember it, Rylusol. And you also treat them with respiratory support, which brings me to my main point, the type of acid-base imbalance that you can have with ALS. We know that we have atrophy of the muscles because of lower motor neuron signs, which means that you'll have decreased accessory respiratory muscle activity, especially when you're sleeping at night. The airways for these patients can often collapse because they're way too relaxed. What does this result with? It's almost as if your patient has obstructive sleep apnea, they have daytime fatigue, they have headaches, sometimes they could be cognitively impaired, and they could present to you to the ED with a litany of these symptoms as well as hypercapnia, and this is because you have chronic respiratory acidosis. They may show you a very large metabolic panel, but make sure you look for elevated serum bicarbonate. Hypercapnia causes elevated CO2 inside your blood, and the way your body compensates this acid buildup is to increase the serum bicarbonate. And the number one way that we can confirm this is arterial blood gas analysis. Like I mentioned earlier, these patients need respiratory support, so you use non-invasive positive pressure ventilation. It provides positive pressure and it improves any atelectasis that could have happened in the patient. Anytime you have a patient come in and they have a history of ALS and they seem to be more confused than normal, don't forget to check for that elevated serum bicarbonate that could be causing this and properly assess the patient for that respiratory insufficiency. The reason, again, why we get MRI is because maybe the patient could have multiple sclerosis. However, this study won't be enough just to rule out the cause for respiratory insufficiency. So patients with very severe disease of hypothyroidism, if they reach mixed edema coma, it can cause respiratory insufficiency and similar fatigue and even cognitive impairment. But remember, step two is all about the big picture. So take a step back and make sure the patient presents with hypothermia, hyponatremia, or bradycardia, even hypotension if you're suggesting some type of hypothyroidism.